far away. Quick, quick shooting. You know, obviously a guy was a healthy scratch week one, and you've seen every single week scratches have increased. Yep. And then obviously with the flowers, you know, dealing with something that we can play in the bigger role this week. Just what you've seen his progression through 10 weeks and been where you think he's at. I've seen him, one, gain a, um, a true understanding of the system and what it's going to take to play outside linebacker in this system that AG has built, uh, and he's bought in. You know, it's kind of it a little unnatural for him, some things and things going from college square stands to stagger stands, just some certain things that he was struggling with at first. But once he committed, bought in, and then it helps me, uh, kind of my assistant coach in the room is his big brother, so he's like, Whatever chef tell you, you better do. <laughs> like so, that kind of helps a little bit. But Jo's fully bought in, and you see the natural progression of a player with his ability that's all the way bought into something. He's getting better each week. How much fun did you guys have in the film room after the, the, the grass monster, the turf monster got him on the interception? I didn't have to say a word because the rest of the guys attacked him. Because we all said, first of all, were you going to let the quarterback tackle you if you didn't slip? It did. But you know, it was a big time play. And, uh, and one of the best things J.O. does is his ability in coverage. A DN is pretty rare, a guy not only with the ability, but the understanding of zone coverage and things like that. So he gives us the opportunity, not myself, but AG, the play caller, to do a bunch of different things with him. How far has he gone from coverage? Just because coming out oh. of college, we didn't see that. All it's, it's, a, it's, it's truly a testament to the player. He, he, he takes it serious just this morning in our meeting. He's like, hey, Coach Shep, can you pull up your pass tape you did? Because I got a couple questions. And I'm like, damn, he looked at every one of those. You know, it's one thing to put things in these lockers. And when I'm saying this, you kind of make these cut-ups for the players. And sometimes, even as a player, you start to watch it, but you don't go through it. I knew for a fact he watched the entire cut-up because plays he asked about were on the latter end of this cut-up. So as a player that took accountability um, amongst himself to go do it, and then he takes coaching well. Rough opening drive last week, and then the rest of the way you held that at the end. What were some of the biggest things you saw that, that you want to see carry forward in this week? It started in practice, uh, and AG and Dan, they preached this, and it's true as a player. It's kind of a redundant statement, but it's true. You're going to play on Sunday or Monday night the way you practice. Uh, you're not going to go out and wet the bed all week and expect to go out and perform at a high level. So whenever guys have a great week, they have an understanding. The, the scheme is simple for them. Now it's on you. You go out, you get a line, get your pass set, and you go knock the run out, which was Pittsburgh. Uh, you knew that's what they wanted to do going into the game. Getting back to maybe week five Minnesota, been, you know, really solid, consistent defensive performance and maybe not so much. Yep. It's been kind of every week. Michael Brockers talked yesterday about the next step, maybe being able to stack some good performances on top of each other. Have absolutely. you guys talked about that? Oh, absolutely. Is that really the next step? Consistency. And we all know we're building something here. But within that, the first step to it is finding consistent improvement because you never want to see the roller coaster ride. You're up one week, down one week. That's signs of a poor system in a team, to be honest with you. Consistent teams, nine times out of 10, end up in the postseason and in opportunities to win the big ring. Where's Trey getting called the Terminator? You got any other nicknames? In the Who's room? that? Trey the Terminator. Oh, Trey, man, that's my guy. Like when I tell you, sells out week in and week out, whether he's up or down, he's tapping me on the shoulder when he's not dressed out at practice. This consummate professional, that's a player any day of the week I go to war with. What's that mean to other guys when they see you go out hurt like that? And come there you go. And make that play at the end of the game. There you, there you go. It, it, it's easy for the coach. Because then you're not just preaching words. You have physical proof in a player who's a proven player in this league, has won a lot of games in this league, who I coach Trey as hard as any player on our roster. And he takes it, yes, sir, no, sir. Consummate profession, is, it makes it really easy on the coach to be able to trickle down that message to the younger guys in the room. You guys were able to create some constant pressure early in the season. It seems like that three dropped off a little bit. Do you attribute that to anything in particular? Uh, no, I attribute it to uh, if you got particular games, we could talk about it. But a lot of teams have turned into run heavy operation against us. And in our room, outside linebacker, that's a misconstrued thing that gets thrown out there, even to players. As soon as you hear outside linebacker, how many sacks does he have? Well, I played with a guy named Olivier Vernon down in Miami who finished the season with seven sacks and got paid $100 million. So what, what are the football people looking for in the edge guys? That's guys who first and foremost can set the edge. 
Because if you can't set the edge, you can't play. We're not looking for guys just running up the field. And then you have to earn the right. Coach Wash preaches this, earn the right to rush. That means first and second down. You have to put them in negative plays to get in the second and eight, third and nine, third and ten, where you can pin your ears back and rush. But if you really watch it, Charles Harris, he's winning. He, he's, 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 he's constantly winning. J.O., he shows up every now and then. But these guys are winning, but either the ball out, and I'm not making excuses. We have to create more pressure and generate more things to get to the quarterback, but I'm just stating facts. How important is that get this week against the oh, it's, it's critical. It's critical, and it's kind of good that we got back-to-back -back weeks coming from the Steelers, you know, traditionally. Powerhouse franchise. They want to line up big people and run it down your throat. Well, here we are again, and you know I think the guy's done a good job this week. Like AG say, we don't got a contract with them. They could come out in 0-1 personnel and spread us out. But we will be prepared week in and week out to try to do our best to stop the run and set edges. At least some instances back when Deshaun Hand's ability was, was obvious. Is he getting to that level again now? I, I, I won't say because I don't know what you're speaking to. Are you speaking previous to this season? Uh, yeah, I mean, Deshaun Hands is a very talented guy, but talent is one thing, but going out and doing it. And, and a lot of things play into that for Hands, so I don't want to misspeak, but health, is he healthy? Okay, now how much does he play? Does he understand the plan? It's a lot of things that go into it. A guy could be talented. It's another thing that I, you know, I'm going to be honest, I hate to hear, oh, this guy's talented. Why isn't it work? Why isn't it being put together? Talent's one thing. It's a lot of guys sitting at home on the couch that's talented that's not on the roster. Bill, you mentioned Julian against the run, uh, and the improvement there, obviously, still has a long way to go. But from August, let's say, till or maybe even May, so like now, tremendous. the growth in the run game, what's that? What's that tremendous. Difference? It's tremendous, and it starts with his technique. Julian is one of the most explosive athletes on our team. So you don't have to be, and this is what I tell the room, 280 pounds to set an edge. If you play with leverage, if you play with the right mindset and the right technique, anybody can set an edge. Now, of course, you don't want a corner coming to set the edge. We got to be realistic. But he's, he's grown. He's continuing to grow, and I'm proud of him. Now, forget the stats. Forget the flash stuff. But his day-to-day -day approach that he's taking, you see him becoming a true professional.